Crazy Blue here today. Today we're going to be talking about Infinity Photo. Is it a better alternative than Photoshop? Or is it just good enough? Stay tuned, we'll take a look at it. Hey, Crazy Will from Crazy Will's Tech Show. Today, we're gonna talk about Infinity Photo. Now, I am a big Photoshop user, a huge one. I've probably been using Photoshop since 1998, showing my age just a little bit. So it's over 20 years of experience working with Photoshop. So, you know, take this review for what you will. But I've recently got into a scenario where I don't have access to Photoshop anymore. Anymore. I was working on a freelance job for quite some time and I had access to Photoshop and pretty much the cloud suite and now I'm at a crossroad where I don't have access anymore the job's done and I have to get my own subscription so I'm like do I want to pay $50 a month for their suite or do I want to try something else and find some alternatives I thought I would venture out and try some alternatives and that's my scenario right now and one of the alternatives that kept coming up over and over again was Infinity Photo and I'm like a new company I don't know I was in that crossroad where I'm like if I learn something new does that lose my value as a graphic designer and I've been doing more and more of this YouTube thing so I'm like kind of teeter and tottering I'm, I'm really struggling so it went on sale and I'm like stop this let's just buy it it was 40 bucks let's just buy it try it out I had a lot of questions and I just downloaded it and gave it a shot and just to let you know by the way this was a really important question for me is I have multiple machines but you're allowed up to two machines that you can run this on it's a lot like Photoshop and so what I'm gonna do instead of me droning on in front of the camera I'm gonna go into the program and I say we take a look at it and I'll walk you through basic scenario of what I do to set up my thumbnail so that way you guys can see how similar they are and then there's certain things that aren't so similar that you kind of need to learn how to do so let's get over to the computer and take a look at it shall we all right so here we are this is infinity photo right here we're gonna click on that and this is the version we're running. It took me basically two hours to get started with this. There's little differences here and there, but it's basically the same setup as Photoshop. There's just little things like you have the liquify, develop, tone, but I, I don't wanna go into a huge tutorial. I just wanna show you what I did when I first got it, how I just opened up stuff and got started. So let's do that. Let's open up a file. YouTube photo. Let's go through some photos real quick. I, I tap on it and I hit spacebar and it loads. These are raw files. Well, Canon's raw file too. It's a CR2 file. This is how I shoot my photos with the green screen in the background. That's why I own a green screen. That and video. Well, I don't do too much video on that, but that kind of gives you an outline so you can get in between the hair and everything. So that's a good idea if you're doing thumbnails to do that. But this is basically the photos that I did. And if we thumb through and I'm going to kind of skip this part, I'm going to stop the video in a second but I just want to show you it loads pretty quick I'm running my uh, 2015 iMac 27 inch 16 gigs of RAM you know I upgraded it if you want to see that video you can see that here that's basically I like that one that's the image I want to go with so we're gonna hit open and it's gonna import it in and the first thing we're gonna do the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna go into the developer and it takes a little time and it's Okay, there it goes. So I'm gonna adjust a couple things. So real quick, we're in the developer. Y you can move, you can try and do the run out. There's a lot of tools over here. Like I said, I'm gonna make this quick. I'm gonna show you the basics because if you're a Photoshop guy, you'll know a lot of these tools and what you wanna do with them. Exposure, let's play with this a little bit. Uh, overexpose it. Let's, let's bring it up a little bit. Black point. Try and see if we can get, yeah, it's too dark. And then this is what I just mess around with. I just play around with the settings. Contrast, yeah, I'll bring it down a little bit. Okay, clarity, I always like the clarity a little bit higher. Saturation. Let's go around there. And you could use these little toggle buttons here, right here. So white balance, you could change the temperature. You know, you can go crazy with this. I, I don't really mess with these too much. I mean, you could, I like shadows and highlights. I always play with this. I tr like to try to darken up the shadows, give it a little bit more of a uh, depth uh, highlights. I like to bring them out, but that's basically it. Now, when we're done with all that, we can go to develop. 
what we're gonna do is you, you take pictures in and you try to cut out the person. So you have the selection and then you have the other select tool here. This is the magic wand. This is the paintbrush. And like I said, I've only been messing around with this probably a week. And there's the freehand select. Now you got the rectangle uh, eclipse tool, all these different uh, selection tools. This is where it got me because in uh, the other program, your freehand select. So you got freehand right here, which you could just draw a circle. And then you have the actual select. You know, so you could do the angle selects. Those are the things that I was like, oh, this doesn't have it. And then they got the magnetic select. So you could, you know, I haven't messed with this one yet. Wow, that's really cool. That works out really nice. So you could actually do it that way. Learning something new. Like I said, guys, I haven't spent that much time with this, but that's pretty cool. That's not the way I normally do it. So I like the paintbrush select. It works really well in Infinity Photo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up this brush a little bit. So that's where your brush size is. And we're gonna select my giant head. Just do a major select and now we can go to the subtract and like I said I, I've only been playing with this for a week so I don't know all the hotkeys yet I gotta kind of go through that and teach myself that to make it a little bit better of a workflow for me all right so now we're gonna go to the subtract we're gonna lower this we're gonna go right in here and we're gonna select that out let's zoom in oh. Uh, zoom in on this and just go around the edges so we got some bleed off here let's grab the select tool add because we got the little yeah, that brush is a little too little Let's go up a little bit, 22. All right, so we're gonna go in here. We want this selected even though it's white. That is a pretty good selection so far. So what we're gonna do now is if we're on the brush select, we're gonna click on refine, just like in the other program. All right, if we go to refine, you'll see, okay, see a lot of stuff didn't get selected. All right, so the brush is a little small. I wanna get in here. Let's refine that brush. We'll make it a little bit bigger. Make about 80, and then what we're gonna do is we, we could be sloppy with this. We could just go around the edge, and it'll refine it more. And it does a pretty decent job. Maybe I need a bigger brush, let's see. Yeah, let's try a little bit bigger. Get in there, and just... All right, so we got that pretty good. Let's go to border width. Make that a little bit bigger. All right, it seems like it got out a lot of the stuff I wanted. That's not bad. I can adjust a lot of that. All right, so I did something I didn't really know what I was doing. So this is a good time to show you that this does have history, just like in Photoshop. I'm just gonna keep saying it apparently. We'll go back through the history and you can actually go through the history like this too, which is really neat. So we'll go back through and that shows you where we were at. So let's go back through the history. So you, you have your output selection, mask, layer mask. I do new, new layer with mask, hit apply. So just to see how we're doing with the background, as you can see, it makes, it makes like a group here. So we got the actual pixel, which is really a layer, but it's a pixel layer. And then we got the mask. So if we turn off the mask, you can see the background. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a new layer in and that's a new pixel layer, and we're gonna do a fill. And this is where it's a little different than our other program. We're gonna go to colors. That's where you get it. I know how you normally have it down here, but we're gonna go over it right over here. And we're gonna pick, I like to pick red because it'll show up the green better. We'll just blink, boom, we got the red. And now we could just click and drag this all the way at the bottom. So now we can see how well, and it did a really good job, I think, on taking out that green. Let me show you some of the photo touch-up stuff, and this is what I do. Hotkeys. This one does work with the hotkey. If you hit the option, you zoom in, you zoom out, you zoom in with the regular mouse button. And then if you hit the space bar, still the same in that aspect. You just click and drag it over. I got some moles. I don't care for them. So we're going to do the healing tool. Let's heal some of this stuff. Go to the pixel layer right up here. Let's hold down on option pick that and what I love and this is right away you can see it it shows you in real time what it's gonna look like before you do it so boom right there Photoshop doesn't have that I I was really impressed by that so I want to pick yeah, let's pick this over here and we're gonna I mean you could see it beforehand so I'm fixing my skin right now getting old real quick you know I like to do a little photo touch-ups here and there molly 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 
hue and saturation. I don't know about you guys, but I use that all the time in Photoshop. That was the first thing I'm like, uh, where's that tool? It's called something different. Let me see where it is. I gotta say the menus are close, but there are, there is some slight changes. It's called HSL adjustment, hue and saturation. Infinity Photo has the same setup. You got your blues, your whites. So we're gonna go to green and we're gonna take out some of the green. See if we could darken it up a little bit. It's a little hard because of sunglasses, but I'm gonna try and darken those greens. Okay, so that's hardening the greens, taking out the greens, but it's also taken out of the greens on my package and on my glasses. So that's good for now. I'm gonna close that. And the cool thing about this is, and this is where Infinity Photo shines. It made a layer right here, guys. I could turn it off. I could turn it on. I mean, how cool is that? And we're gonna paint that layer and see if I can bring back my glasses. So let's see, grab the paintbrush tool and you can see, and it shows you right in real time there. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna zoom in first. Now let's bring back my sunglasses. Let's bring them back. Cause I know how much everybody loves my sunglasses. So we're gonna go over this and we're gonna color them back in. So it's taking out the green for around the edges. Let me show you around the edges. You make, see it makes it nice and dark. And now we're going in here and cleaning that up, taking that away. So, I mean, what a cool way to do things. The thing in this is kind of like non-destructive. So now the color of my glasses are back. Just to show you real quick, if you paint white, you're gonna get the adjustment back. If you paint black, you know, just like a lot of programs, I'm going to skip a couple steps after this just to show you other tools, but this is almost finished product of what I'm going to use for my thumbnail. So let's save this out. You can go to save, which will save out as a infinity photo file, or you can go to export. And this is where it really gets interesting. You have so many different ways to export and look what they have to export as PSD, a Photoshop file, which is awesome. So if you are working with someone and they have the Photoshop suite, you're not a man lost in space. Now, I don't know how they open up in Photoshop because I don't have the program. Potentially, it should be fine because I open up my old Photoshop files in this and it works and I will show you that right now. So we're going to export. All right. So we'll save that, boom, there it goes, it's off to the races. Let's open up an existing Photoshop file. So I'm gonna open it up, but we'll open up, this was actually created in Photoshop, we're gonna open it up. And just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like when you get it in from Photoshop, it keeps your groups, it has your layers, your masks, which I'm shocked that it transfers those over, that's, that's pretty incredible. We got the text, which, you get to keep the text and you get the layer. For this one, we're gonna delete this. We're gonna use this file. And now what we'll do is we'll go over here, do this. Let's just group these for now. Let's see if we can click and drag the layer. All right, so it doesn't have that feature yet. So what we'll do is we're gonna go to edit, copy, go over here, edit, paste. Boom, puts the group right in there. Right now what I'm doing is I'm resizing the photo and I'm holding option as I'm doing that. Let's get me in position. Okay, so another thing that you may want to really know is navigation. If you don't like using the zoom key, you can navigate right there and you could just beep beep or you could just double click on it. And there you go, you have your zoom, which is really good. So if you need to navigate, you can navigate in here, you can move it around. I'm gonna have to figure out a background and I'm gonna rework this. I like to spend time on my thumbnails, but I wanted to show you the text. And let me show you that. And what we're gonna do is you're gonna click, you can just tap on the screen and it'll make text for you. We're not gonna do it that way because Infinity Photo has a really cool way of doing it. So we're gonna delete that layer. Layers are the, basically the same setup. So let's, let's adjust it that way. Isn't that cool? If you click and you drag, you can make it any size you want. So let's go in there, let's let's type in. All right, and all right, so we're gonna push this off to the side right now. We're gonna go into the font. We're gonna, we're gonna change the color. Let's do the picker, let's go with that color. I don't know why you have to pick it, and maybe this is me not knowing the program very well, and then click on it again, and then click on the actual color here, and then that'll change the actual font color. That took me a little time to figure out. And that's why I said, isn't exactly like Photoshop. It's pretty close. I think some things are actually better. Let's go through the fonts and see which one. And we can arrow down through these and just 
you know, kind of pick something. You know, maybe we want to make it look like the logo. I like the way that looks. We can adjust the size here. Do -do 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 -do. Click on this and adjust it that way. Now, every object in here has two ways of doing it. You can click on this. If you hit Command, it'll go out from the center. If you hit Option, it'll go out from one anchor point. If we click on this right here, we can rotate it, which is really cool. We'll hit Command Z. Like I said, that works. You can change character. If you click on character, this window pops up, which is really cool. This looks very familiar, which honestly, this is another thing I'm probably gonna do. I'm gonna click and drag this character right in here. You can kind of format the menu the way you want, and I think character should be right here so that way I can get to this easier. Bring any win window any way you want with, I mean, there's so many options, just like in Photoshop. So, you know, you have every option you want here. You can even change the color. Last thing I want to show you guys is effects. I use this a lot in Photoshop, and now in Infinity Photo, they have it. Layer effects. We click on that, all your layer effects are exactly the same as well, which is really nice, and there are slight differences, but if you click, you know, outer shadow, we can make the distance, intensity, inner shadow, glow, I mean, you got all your same effects as you did before, gradient, color overlay, embed, 3D effect, outline, I use this a ton, I love outline. All the same effects as Photoshop, I feel like I keep saying that, but you got a lot of the same stuff that you need. You have the same, you have the opacity, you can turn it up and down, adjustment layer, you can make it dark and multiply screen, dodge. It's the same workflow, I guess is what I'm trying to go through. So, just wanted to give you a quick tour, show you what my experience was, my first impressions on it. Like okay, so that was Infinity Photo. I turned off the camera, I finished up my project, and I'll show you what it looks like right here so you guys can get an idea. I didn't want to go too crazy with it and bore the hell out of you guys. I just wanted to show you some of the tools. If you think I need to make some more tutorials as I'm learning this, you know, leave a comment down below and I'll do that. There was little differences that just slowed my workflow down. The thing that got me was if I do get another freelance job where I get a chance to get this or if I want to finally just break down and go into the cloud suite, I can jump over to that. For the mere fact that it, they're very similar, it would probably take a little bit of a learning curve to get back into Photoshop, but I've been doing it for years and probably won't take that long for the fact that you can import or export Photoshop files which is great so all my old files that I have I'm able to access them which is phenomenal I'm surprised they get away with that so I love that so that way if I want to jump in or if I want to collaborate with somebody or work on someone's project they can send me a Photoshop file I can open it work on it and send it back like I said I caught this on sale it's 50 bucks and you own it opposed to uh, $20 a month for cloud just for Photoshop if you want the whole suite it's gonna cost you 50 bucks I think it is so this is my alternative I'm, I'm gonna try it out I'm gonna run and gum with it I also downloaded the iPad version I'm gonna do a video on that later on so you might want to subscribe so that way you can get that pretty impressed with infinity photo so far I'm glad there's an alternative out there to try to help struggling artists god I picked the wrong profession so if I had to rate it uh, I'd say it's a five out of five guys 50 bucks you get a, a photo editing software and I know there's other alternatives out there you got gimp you got so, so many other ones it's just I like with a company it, it just to me it just kind of holds them more responsible and I like something that's close enough to Photoshop and this was what my alternative was and if I had to predict the future I, I think it's gonna be a definite competitor because I would imagine that there's more people out there that are feeling the way I am and they're not really wanting that subscription program and there's a lot of great software out there that Photoshop's kind of showing its age and getting back so you know I still love Photoshop I still think it's like the best program ever I'm not bad them. I just feel we're in a time period where software should be a little bit cheaper because it's more people using it and they're gonna make their money that way so but that's it for me guys make sure you like and subscribe if this helped you and remember you could do anything if you put your mind to it later guys I, I can't help it I'm always gonna be a creator I just not happy when I'm not creating I mean whether people like it or not this isn't a Marvel movie guys there's no secret ending no strategy or something just Hit like and subscribe and maybe click on one of the videos above. Don't know what to tell you.